Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how antibodies are produced by B lymphocytes. You should then be able to describe the role of T helper cells in this process. In the last video we looked at antibodies and if you haven't seen that video then you should watch it now. Antibodies play a critical role in the specific immune system and scientists call this role humoral immunity. Now I need to tell you that the production of antibodies can seem complex. The best advice is to memorize the steps that I tell you. Now a key part of this process involves a type of cell called a T helper cell. We'll be looking at the different types of T lymphocytes in detail in the next video. But in this video we'll only focus on the role of T helper cells in the formation of antibodies. Okay, imagine that a pathogen has entered the human body. Like all pathogens, this is covered with antigen molecules. First, the pathogen is engulfed by a macrophage during phagocytosis. The macrophage digests the pathogen and processes the antigen molecules. The macrophage now displays the antigens on its surface attached to MHC molecules. In this way, the macrophage is acting as an antigen presenting cell and we saw this in the video on phagocytosis. At this stage, the macrophage interacts with T helper cells. Like all T lymphocytes, T helper cells are formed in the bone marrow and mature in the thymus gland. Each T helper cell has a unique T cell receptor on its surface and the T cell receptors on each T helper cell are specific for an individual antigen. There are millions of unique T helper cells, each targeting a different antigen. After some time, the macrophage will encounter a T helper cell with a receptor that matches the antigen displayed on the macrophage surface. The T helper cell now binds its receptor to the antigen. The T helper cell also has a surface molecule called CD4 which locks onto the MHC molecule on the macrophage. Once the T cell receptor is bound to the correct antigen, the T helper cell is activated. Activated T helper cells produce chemicals called interleukins, which are a type of cytokine. The interleukins trigger the activated T helper cell to undergo mitosis, forming identical clones of activated T helper cells. The interleukins also stimulate macrophages to carry out phagocytosis. Okay, I'm showing you here a number of B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes are formed in the bone marrow where they also mature before being released into the blood. Just like T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes have antigen receptors attached to their surface membrane. However, in the case of B lymphocytes, the antigen receptors are membrane bound antibodies. These antibodies are IgM, which are similar to IgG that we saw in the last video. All of the antibodies on a particular B lymphocyte will bind to the same antigen. However, the antibodies on different B lymphocytes will bind to different antigens. And because there are millions of unique B lymphocytes, there will be at least one B lymphocyte for every possible antigen. Okay, here's the pathogen that has infected the body. At some point, the pathogen will encounter the B lymphocyte with the correct antibody to bind to the antigen on the pathogen's surface. Now the B lymphocyte attaches to the pathogen and the pathogen is engulfed. The pathogen is digested and the antigens are presented on the surface of the B lymphocyte attached to an MHC molecule. So as you can see, the B lymphocyte is now acting as an antigen presenting cell. Now the activated T helper cell that we saw earlier uses its T cell receptor to attach to the antigen on the B lymphocyte surface. Because the correct B lymphocyte has now been selected by the T helper cell, scientists call this stage clonal selection. Now the T helper cell produces interleukins which activate the B lymphocyte. At this stage, the activated B lymphocyte undergoes mitosis forming clones of two types of cells called plasma cells and B memory cells. And scientists call this stage clonal expansion. The cloned plasma cells now release identical antibodies, 
which bind to the antigens on the pathogen surface. This disables the pathogen, marks it for phagocytosis, or triggers agglutination. This process of antibody production is called the primary immune response, and this can take days or weeks to develop. During this time, the pathogen can reproduce, causing the infected person to show symptoms. Now, B memory cells remain in the blood, ready for a second infection with the same pathogen. If a second infection happens, then B memory cells rapidly turn into plasma cells and release antibodies. This second production of antibodies is called the secondary immune response. I'm showing you here the relative levels of antibodies produced in the primary and secondary immune responses. As you can see, the secondary immune response produces a much higher level of antibodies, and this response can effectively destroy the pathogen before any symptoms develop. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe the role of B lymphocytes and humoral immunity.